Sarah and I are going to make hot sauce. So we're going to make what's called uh, lacto fermented hot sauce. So it's peppers that are gone through lactic fermentation, which is something that I talked about earlier in the presentation. So I'm going to walk Sarah through kind of the steps, and I hope that this will help you kind of do this at home. There's instructions in the worksheet that's attached to this lecture. And uh, a big kind of takeaway uh, before we start is that this is a general structure, kind of a general um, a formula, uh, but you can put in sort of what you want and the types of ingredients and combinations that you want within this framework. So when we make hot sauce, um, we're gonna uh, need a few things. So uh, I'm gonna need a mason jar, I have a kitchen scale, I have some water, some salt, and of course, the star of the day, the peppers, as well as some sun dried tomatoes for flavor and some garlic for flavor. And I have chosen to use mostly habanero peppers, which are very spicy. Um, and uh, uh, sort of, a, you can see them here. Here's a habanero pepper. It's very spicy, it's small and orange. I also have some sweet pepper in there um, to balance it out. Uh, but Sarah, I understand that you uh, don't like spicy as much as I do. So what do you have over there? So yeah, we're gonna call mine a knot sauce because it's not very hot, but I want it to be really flavorful and I want it to be almost like a flavor bomb. So I've got some shallots and I'm gonna, I've got some sun-dried tomatoes as well but I also have sliced cherry tomatoes. And then I have these pretty mild dried guajillo peppers. Um, and I also have a lot of garlic, but I'm gonna try something by you. I'm gonna try putting some lime in mine and see what happens. Oh, wow, hey, it's an experiment, right? Why not? It's totally an experiment. I also have a little bit of cumin. I'm gonna put in a just a teeny bit of chipotle flakes, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of, of a bite, but not very much because my tongue doesn't like spicy. All right, I'm excited to learn how to make your knot sauce. And so the first step is we need to weigh the, we need to record the mass of our jar that we're going to ferment it, our fermentation vessel. So we can put that on our scale and we can then see kind of how much does it weigh because we're going to have to write that down and have that information for later. So my jar weighs 374 grams. Okay, and I'm doing mine in ounces and it weighs 13.5 ounces. Perfect. So once you have that, it's just time to stuff your ingredients into your jar. So um, you can really fill it up. I have a lot of uh, you know peppers and, and garlic and sunny tomatoes uh, in here to make a, a more flavorful hot sauce. So now you can just watch me kind of putting that into the jar. Um, and yeah, just fill it up, fill it up. Yeah. So I have a question by you. If we don't have a kitchen scale, can we still make hot sauce? We can. We're going to have to kind of just uh, uh, guesstimate using volumes. So um, as you see later, we're going to uh, use the kitchen scale to estimate how much salt to put in our hot sauce because salt helps the fermentation. It helps select for those lactic acid bacteria. So we're going to weigh out the salt. But if you can't weigh out the salt, you can actually make uh, a solution um, of 0 0.75 um, tablespoons of salt per cup of water. So um, those instructions are also available in our worksheet, but there are workarounds. I prefer to use a scale. You know, if you're serious about fermentation, I would definitely recommend having a scale because uh, mass is kind of more accurate measurement in the kitchen. Okay. All right, so I've got everything in my jar and it already looks beautiful. <laughs> It's, I love the colors, I love the colors. And that's the cool thing about your, you know, the, the hot sauce here is you can make a green one, you can make a red one, you can make an orange one, you can make a brown one, you can make whatever you want uh, because that's the fun part about cooking. I, as I said, when I first started cooking, I didn't follow recipes. Uh, I didn't like to be confined. And I would encourage people to still sort of, you know, try to be creative, try to try something that, that you enjoy. Uh, you decide what you want in your hot sauce. I'm still stuffing my uh, peppers. I, I have actually a little bit more than I thought. Uh, it's important <laughs> that, you, that you cut the peppers, so slice the peppers. Uh, we want to slice the peppers to expose them uh, so that the lactic acid bacteria get access to the sugars. 
If we just put in a whole pepper, the bacteria are not going to be able to do their work. So slice it up, you know, expose, kind of damage the, the pepper. That's going to make the fermentation process work much better. So now that we put our peppers in, it's time to add water. So I have some water here, and we're going to add water to fill it up. And we're going to add water, you know, to basically, yeah, fill up the jar almost all the way up. Try to get to the surface. You can see here. So mine is just full of water. It's just jam-packed in there. And once we add the water, we are now going to record the mass of the jar again. We're going to now kind of write down how much water and pepper or ingredients are in there. So I'm going to weigh mine, and it's 1,269 grams. What about you, Sarah? Mine is 24.25 ounces. Great. So to get the mass of the contents in the jar, you just subtract the mass of the jar. So remember, we recorded the mass of the jar in the beginning. Now we have the mass of the jar plus the ingredients. So now that we subtract the, subtract the mass of the jar, we know how much the stuff in there weighs. So mine is about, weighs about, a thousand grams or so. Okay. And I've got a question. Um, so we're both using glass jars and is that recommended or can we use plastic? So I prefer to use glass uh, for a few reasons. First of all, as you can see, the glass is more transparent than maybe a a kind of corresponding plastic uh, container. So I like to be able to see the changes that are happening during the fermentation process. It's really beautiful to check in on it every day. And so I prefer glass for that reason. The other reason is that if you use plastic, sometimes the plastic will absorb uh, some of the flavors and it's gonna be kind of really hard to wash out the spices and the aroma of the plastic. So I just prefer to use glass and mason jars like this one are available. They're cheap, they're you know, easy to come by. So that is my recommendation, to be honest. Okay, so once we have our, um, the mass of, of the contents, we want to add salt. We want to add enough salt so that it is 2% by mass of the total mass of everything in the jar. So you're gonna have to do some math and we uh, can talk about that in the worksheet again that you can find uh, connected to this lecture. So uh, I've already weighed out my salt actually, so that it's a 2% final mass of everything. And I'm now gonna add it. So you see I have my salt in here in this little small jar. Instead of adding all the salt to the big jar, I'm gonna actually pour out a little bit of water into the salt and then dissolve the salt that way. So you see that I poured water and then I kind of just can stir it around a little bit here. And now we're dissolving the salt and making a little salt water in this tiny uh, container. And then we can pour that back. How's it going, Sarah, over there? It's going really good. So I've got everything ready. I did not do the fancy salt trick. So I've got my lid on and I think there's some fun coming up with shaking. Is that right? <laughs> Well, before that, actually, uh, well, you can, you can shake it first. Yeah, let's do that. Let's shake it first. So <laughs> get everything well mixed in there. Uh, just get the salt distributed and dissolved. The ingredients well distributed. Shake, 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 shake. This is a fun thing to do, a good, a good workout. And look at those beautiful colors. I mean, wow, I love it. Oh, that's so cool. Wow, that looks delicious. Yeah, I'm super excited about how pretty the limes look in it. <laughs> we'll see if they stay the same color. You never know what microbes will do. Yeah. Okay, so once we've shaken it, we then want to open it up again and we want to push down our um, uh, peppers and stuff so they're below the water level. We don't want them to st stick out above the surface. And then a last little trick that I learned when I was working at the Basque Culinary Center in Spain about a year and a half ago is to cover the surface with a little piece of plastic wrap. And this is to prevent molds from growing. Molds like to grow at the very surface, sort of the interface of the air and the, and the water. 
And we can actually prevent that mold from growing by using a little plastic wrap. So I'm gonna, I have a little piece of plastic wrap, I'm gonna sort of just put it like, as if it's a lid that sort of covers the surface um, of, our, of, our, of our hot sauce ferment. And that way nothing is exposed, the peppers are staying below. Uh, there's also special kind of tools that you can use for this fermentation uh, lids, but this will do. So you can see that it's sort of covered there. Yeah. Looks great. And then we seal it. And you know, the secret ingredient in fermentation is just time. Yeah. So how much time? I would say maybe seven to nine days uh, at room temperature here in California. So um, I don't know, what is that? 20 degrees Celsius or so. I think room temperature anywhere uh, from seven to nine days. Uh, but keep an eye on it. And I think we have a video of what you can expect to see during this time. You're gonna see some very clear changes. The uh, vegetables are gonna kind of change in color. They're gonna become a little more dull. You're gonna see the water become a lot cloudier. Those are the microscopic shafts kind of growing inside the fermentation. And you're also going to see the vegetables rising to the surface more and more because gas is being produced. Carbon dioxide is being produced. These beautiful small bubbles, it's going to be sparkly, like, you know, a sparkly drink. Um, and that is, you know, the microscopic chefs doing their work. And then after a week or so, you have your peppers, you can then blend it, and you get something like this. This is a fermented hot sauce that I made. Uh, in a similar way, just a few weeks ago. And it's delicious, the color is vibrant, uh, the flavor is really beautiful, and recommend everybody to try it out. Yeah, great. Um, so I cannot wait. I, like, it's gonna be really hard to wait seven to nine days to see what the results are, but I guess that's an important part of experimenting in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, mean, I definitely have a look at it every day. I love looking at it and seeing the bubbles forming, the, the water turning, turning cloudy. It's, it's a beautiful process.